This is gonna be the first video in a multi-part series about mindset. Now I've been working in music production professionally for about 10 years and I wanted to share a lot of my experiences in hopes that it might help someone out there. Now, if you have a specific question, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you'd like to know. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the top five things I wish I knew before I got into music production. Number one, pick one. And this is in reference to your DAW. So when you start in music production, it's really romantic. I remember the first time I saw some of my idols and saw what program they were using, and I thought to myself, I need that program in order to be just like them. So I started off with Logic, which at the time was owned by a company called eMagic. It was a gray screen, I think it was Logic number four. And after a while using that, I started getting work at studios and that meant I had to learn Pro Tools. So I switched over to Pro Tools. Then after a while on Pro Tools, Ableton came out and it was this whole new concept where you had a jam session window and live loops and all this kind of stuff. So I saw the creativity potential in Ableton and switched over to Ableton. Ended up teaching Ableton for a while and then I discovered Bitwig. Now Bitwig, I think, has the potential to be my one and only DAW of choice, but there's a couple of key things that are holding me back to fully switching over. But after I got into Bitwig for a while, I discovered Studio One. I heard Studio One and I felt like there was a sonic difference inside of Studio One that was better than anything out there. So I switched over to Studio One and I worked on Studio One for a while. Then after about a year of Studio One, I ended up just going back to Ableton because everybody I was collaborating and working with was on Ableton already. And herein lies the problem. Every time you switch over to a new DAW, one, you have to completely relearn a majority of the things that were once so simple to you. You have to relearn how they are in the new DAW. You have to relearn all your key commands. Then at some point, if you do switch DAWs again, and you have to go back to old projects, you're gonna find that all those old projects are inside of that old DAW. So you either spend more time relearning all the key commands and all the shortcuts for that DAW in order to go back and work in that DAW, or you export all the stems and spend equal amount of time setting it up in the current DAW that you're using. So at the start of your journey, I encourage you to play around with all of them. Explore, be creative, discover which one actually really fits the way you work because there's a DAW out there for each person and each mindset. But at the end of the day, once you've found one that fits with you, just stick with it. Every time you switch, it's gonna be a huge step back and take it from me who's gone through almost all of them. It becomes more and more frustrating when you have to recover old projects or you feel like you're just a little bit behind with the latest update because you took one or two years off. On that note, you can pretty much make a full completed song in any software now, even software like MPC or Machine, where it's more of a beat focused software, you can still get a great mix and a full song inside of those softwares. But if you wanna see any start to finish videos using Machine or MPC, just leave a comment down below. But to sum up, point number one is pick a DAW, and stick with it. Number two, start with stocks. Now this doesn't refer to investing, but in a sense, it's a reference to investing your time. There are so many plugins out there and they all do the same thing in their own unique, different ways. But when I first started out in audio production, I got obsessed with having as many plugins as possible. I got into the Waves bundle, the Sound Toys bundle, the Fab Filter bundle, pretty much any bundle that I could get, I felt I needed it because more options meant more better. I started collecting all these and collecting all of them and just completely disregarded all the stock plugins that came inside of the DAW that I was working with at the time. And a couple of things happened. One, Whenever I needed to pick a certain plugin to use for a certain scenario, I would spend five to 10 minutes going through my whole list of everything I have, trying something, realizing I didn't quite know how it worked, then going to something else, realizing I still didn't know quite how it worked. And then I'd end up going back to the stock plugin because it was simple, it was easy. I used it before and I knew how it worked. So I would always end up using the stock plugins but I was just overwhelmed with all this choice and all this clutter of all these plugins that I felt I really needed to have. The key takeaway here is plugins are a tool. They accomplish a specific job when you're trying to accomplish a specific task. And the stock plugins on almost every single DAW now are so good. 
They sound amazing. They're able to do pretty much everything you need them to do. And learning what tool you need for the job is more important than having all the tools for a job you're not quite sure exactly how to complete. Start off by mastering the stock plugins. Now, if you want to see some future videos where we go through and we completely mix and master songs with stock plugins, just leave a comment down below. But if you're just getting into music production, don't get swept up in all the glamour of the bundles and the monthly subscriptions. Start by mastering your stock plugins because they can accomplish 99.9% .9 of what you need them to accomplish. Number three, be a creator, not a collector. Now this specifically refers to samples. And if you're someone like me out there that just has terabytes and terabytes and hard drives scattered all around with just mounds and mounds and mounds of sample packs, you know what I'm talking about. We get so swept up into having the latest sample pack or needing to have the new cashmere kit or the Oliver kit or whatever kind of music you're into to the point where we have so much one, we don't know where to start looking to find what we need to find. And two, we spend hours scrolling through and listening to every single snare sound in this giant list of snares. It gets to the point where we're so overwhelmed where we find ourselves spending more time organizing everything that we've collected than actually using what we actually have. And when I look back at most of my projects, I end up using about the same five to 10 kits for every single project out there because once you kind of dial in your sound, you're gonna find yourself coming back to the same drum sounds over and over again because they just work. And then you can use some stock plugins and maybe tweak them a little bit to make them sit in the mix differently. But if the sounds work, you're gonna end up reusing them over and over and over again. So in order to start dealing with this overwhelm in my life, I've decided to set aside a little bit of time every day where I'm starting to go through all of these hundreds and hundreds of terabytes of samples. And if I'm not gonna use it, I delete it. I actually feel good deleting things because that's less decision fatigue. That's less things for me to worry about and for me having to scroll through in order to find. Now there's another theory that ties into this called creative restrictions which means that if you only have a specific amount of things to use, you're gonna find new and interesting ways to use them and reinvent them as opposed to just going through hundreds and hundreds of options and alternatives. So when you start out on your journey and your goal is to create, get the minimal amount of things that you need to create and that will force you to really learn and understand those samples, use them over and over again, start manipulating them in creative ways as opposed to just becoming a collector of sounds and having all these sounds that take up space on your hard drive, take up space on external hard drives, and then you find yourself in a studio session spending more time scrolling through sound possibilities than actually just finding one that works or being creative and manipulating one that sort of worked to make it something new and unique. So be a creator and not a collector. Number four, the jack of all trades, but the master of none. This is an old saying that goes way back, but it is so true, especially in music production. When you start out working in music production, you might feel a little bit of overwhelm because all of a sudden, not only do you have to learn how to create beats, play music, but now you have to think about, I have to learn how to mix everything. I have to learn how to master everything. And then outside of the music needs, you're gonna have to learn how to do self-promotion, release music, create artwork, everything becomes very, very, very overwhelming. So one thing that I wish I knew when I first started was just to pick one niche, one little thing and focus specifically on that. When I started out, I wanted to make beats and I wanted to be an artist. I had a message that I wanted to portray to the world. So I figured I would make music in order to create the canvas for me to put my lyrics on top of and get it out there to prove a point and to deliver my message. But what happened was I got so swept away in the mixing and mastering side of things that the creativity and the artist desire that I had at the beginning slowly started to go down while my technical skills started to go up and up and up and up. Now, this brought me a whole bunch of opportunities and luckily I was able to make a living as a mixing and mastering engineer for quite a while. But the whole time I was working on mixing and mastering, there was a little voice inside of my head always reminding me of the original reason I got into music to begin with. And I'm telling you, if you get into music for a specific reason, 
focus on that reason. If you wanna be a beat maker, focus on making beats. The mix doesn't have to be that good if the beat is amazing. You might end up getting a placement because professionals know that if the mix is a little bit off, but the creative idea is unique and very interesting, the mix can always be fixed after the fact. And if you get a placement, 99% of the time, they're gonna want the stems because they have a mixing guy that's gonna do all the mixing. On the other side of that, if you wanna get into music specifically for mixing, focus solely on that. Don't worry about getting swept up into all the other hype and all the other things. Become a master of what intrigues you at the start because being a master of that specific skill set is gonna be much more valuable to other people than just being mediocre and good at a whole bunch of other things because there's plenty of people out there that are mediocre and good at all those things as well. Point number five, never forget your why. Why did you start into music? Why did you even first become intrigued to get into the music industry? I've seen so many creative people out there who start off with a unique original idea of who they are as an artist, and then as soon as they get in the music industry, they start comparing themselves to other artists. They start listening to reference tracks before they make any sort of creative decisions. They start comparing their numbers to other people on social media or finding the hottest trend or what's currently popping off on TikTok, and then they try and make their music to shape into that mold instead of just sticking with their original concept. Now, the reason I wish I knew this at the beginning of my music production career is I fell into this super hard. When I first started, I had a specific reason and a specific goal I got into music. And then I started seeing all the glamor and the glitz of the people I met and I started changing my sound. I started changing my name. I went from genre to genre, flipped around, but every time I changed my sound or every time I changed the name of my project, I would have to rebuild my entire audience base from scratch. And then I have some friends that started at the same time I did and they just stuck with their original plan and now they're at a specific level where I'm down here looking up going, wow, I wonder what would have happened if I would have just stuck with my original concept and believed in myself and not felt that I had to go all over and try and be like all these other people because the music industry loves unique individuals. There's enough clones out there. So when you get into it, remember your why. Remember why you're doing it and be confident in yourself and your reason why you're in it and try not to get distracted by all the glamor and all the pretty lights. So those were the top five lessons that I wish I knew before I got into music production. I've learned them over the last 10 years the hard way, so I'm hoping that this video might help someone out there avoid some of these pitfalls and stick true to their path. Now, if there are specific things you wanna see videos about, just leave a comment down below. We'll keep them coming. My name's Stu, this is Create, Educate, and Inspire, and thank you very much for your time, and hope this video was helpful to you in some way. So, fire up the computer and make some beats. Peace.